Write it down. Dream Team, it's your boy D. Neil back with another reaction video, guys. Here we are with Healthy Emmy talking about why she left Australia. Why did she leave the land down under? The incredible land down under. Before we dive in, make sure you subscribe to the channel, ring notification bell, give the video a thumbs up so it gets suggested. Oh my God! So when I first got to Australia, I made a video saying we're not in Kansas anymore. Well, we're still not in Kansas. We were never in Kansas. Has anybody seen The Wizard of Oz? Woo! As Ron Swanson said in Parks and Rec, blueprints for the future are a fool's errand. So a year ago, mm. I decided to pick up my entire- I like that. Blueprints for the future are a fool's errand. I like that. Entire <laughs> life and move it to the other side of the globe from Boston <clears throat> to Australia. And in the past year, my life has done a complete 180. Hey honeys, it's Emmy. If you're new to the channel, welcome. My name is Emmy and I'm the creator of the Eat As Much As You Want plant-based lifestyle program and I decided to spend a year of my life in Australia on a whim. I pick up, I picked up, I pick up, I picked up and I went. Now, if you've been keeping up with my Insta stories, you probably have seen that I haven't been in Australia for the past two weeks. I spent a week in LA and now I am back in Boston. So I've kept this whole thing pretty quiet and on Instagram I didn't make any permanent posts with the location saying that I was back. So the only people that know about this are the clients on my program because you guys are like family. So I shared this with you last week. But yes, I have left Australia for good and I am back in my home in Boston. So if you're new here, welcome honey, welcome to the fam, welcome to the Healthy Honeys. Let me explain where we are and what's Talk going on me. here. So Talk I'm from me. Massachusetts and from Boston. I grew up here, I went to school here, and then I went to college in North Carolina. I got a degree in math education and then I moved back here to Boston and I taught algebra and geometry for one year oh, wow. before I realized this is not what I want to do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I ain't, you know what I'm saying? Because I thought I was going to be, I wanted to be a coach. When I left high school, I was like, I want to be a coach. You know what I'm saying? Because I love basketball. I love play, but I knew I wasn't going to like play professionally anywhere. So I was like, I, I'm going to try to be a coach. Went to college, uh, got a degree in uh, recreation and sports management with a minor in coaching athletics. Uh, graduated from college. And I, I knew I didn't want to be a teacher. I did not want to be a teacher. I knew that teaching was not the life for me because I I do not want to deal with kids like that are not mine. <laughs> I don't want to. I can't. I'm not capable of it. Uh, basketball, I, I, I've coached before, like Little League and stuff like that. It's cool because like it's something that I love and I get to teach it to younger children. But I didn't want to have to teach just so I could coach. I didn't want that life. So yeah, I I, I feel she said one year and I realized nah this ain't it and it probably them kids that helped her realize nah this ain't it. <laughs> I wanted to do this. I had such a passion for YouTube and for helping people I become like, healthy and this is like. what lit me up. It was all I thought about, all I wanted to do was exactly what I'm doing right now was to yeah. make videos and to teach people how to become healthy and help people become healthy. It was what lit me up and brought me so, so much energy. I absolutely love that. Find out what makes you happy. Find out what you want to do in life and do it. Simple as that. I love it. But I didn't feel that I could do that while being a math teacher in Boston. It just didn't mm. feel appropriate to be a full-time math teacher and to also have a YouTube channel on the side. I was like, what if my kids find it and then they start calling that. me Healthy Emmy and then the school finds out and they're like, this is inappropriate. It was just too much for me to handle. And I was like, I need to get the heck out of here. I need to go to the other side of the world and pursue my dream and just do this thing. So that's exactly what I did. I was... I'm sorry I keep interrupting, but it's funny that she says that because, like, before this, uh, I do this full time now, but before, when I first started, I was doing, like, uh, I worked for basically a drug prevention company, a uh, organ drug prevention organization uh, that we went into, like, schools, middle schools, high schools, and we talked to kids about the danger of drugs and things such as that. 
Uh, <laughs> every school I went into, I was like, hey, this is, this is my YouTube channel. Like, y'all go follow me. Next school, this is my YouTube channel. Write it on the board. Y'all go follow me. Tell your friends to follow me. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, I need subscribers. I need views. I, I Go follow me. But she like, nah, I ain't wanting to find out. I want y'all to find out. And I want y'all to watch out the videos. 23, I was in Boston. And I was like... I'm moving to Australia. I'm gonna go there and I'm gonna be a teacher, but my main purpose of going there is to really start this dream life that I've always wanted and and go for it. I love so that. I was 23. I was also doing school to be a nutritionist and become certified. Um, and I was I was a math teacher and I, I picked up and I went to Australia and I started teaching in Australia and I became certified while I was there as a nutritionist oh, wow. and I started taking some clients and that was the beginning of what my life is now. I started listening so to cool. podcasts about building a business and entrepreneurship and I read Grant Cardone's book called Be Obsessed or Be Average and I realized that I was holding back my obsession with mm. YouTube and with being a nutritionist. It was something that I was sort of embarrassed of almost because, you know, sitting here, I'm sitting in my room right now talking to a camera. It's not, <laughs> it's, it's still not a normal thing. It's, it's not a traditional go get a job and work for the rest of your life. It's, it's yes. weird. And I am kind of a weird person and I've embraced that. But I was, I was embarrassed by <laughs> Not that I was ever embarrassed by it, but I know exactly what she means. What she says, like, sitting in a room, like, talking to a camera. But, like, I feel like as, as, as you grow or you continue to do it more, you stop looking at it like that and you start realizing, like, hey, like, I'm talking to my subscribers. It, 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 it's to a camera, literally. But really, I'm really talking to my subscribers through the video. So you do become more comfortable with it. Uh, it's to the point where, like, I, I enjoy talking to the camera. Like, this is fun. This is cool. Uh, but it's, but I know exactly what she means by, like, it being weird in the beginning. Because, yeah, it, in the beginning for me, it was weird. And so I wasn't allowing my true obsession to shine through. And even still being in Australia, being a teacher, I was not going all in. And then I read that book and I realized that I was holding back my obsession. And I was like, that's it. I am done. I'm done. I'm going all in. I don't care. I'm putting every single ounce of energy into this because the last thing that I ever want to do, I have this intense, intense fear of sitting on my deathbed, looking back on my life and being like, are you kidding, Emily? You had everything at your fingertips Ooh. and you sat by and you let yourself be average talk to that me Amy. the out of me talk to me Amy. talk There's to nothing me nothing that irks me more mm. than wasting time Come and i'm just so fearful of getting to the end of my life and feeling like it was all wasted especially because i grew up and you know i can afford i, I can afford to buy this macbook i can afford Ooh. to buy this camera i was mm. blessed with a college education that allowed me to become a teacher that allowed me to move to australia Talk i to have me. absolutely every reason to go for my dreams and if i didn't i'm doing such an injustice to the people that don't have the resources Ooh. to go for their dreams so as Ooh. i was listening Talk to me, Emmy. Talk to y'all. Hear what she's saying? Yeah, she's preaching, guys. At the end of the day, you have to chase what makes you happy. Especially, she had no excuse for why she couldn't chase it. She could afford all the resources, and you really don't even need expensive like the MacBook. You don't need expensive resources to start a channel. Like you only, know I mean? I've seen people start it with just a phone. I started with the phone and a little laptop. Uh, you don't, I know what I'm saying? Uh, but if, I mean, if you choose what you want to do, then go for it. If you want to play basketball, go for it. If you want to be a teacher, go for it. Find out what makes you happy and do that. Emmy, come on, tell him. Can't go to the deathbed with any regrets. Listening to all these podcasts and looking into entrepreneurship and starting a business, I realized that I needed help. My degree is in math education. I don't know the first 
thing about business. And all of these podcasts that I was listening to, everyone was saying, get a mentor, get a mentor, get a mentor. Mm. So I invested my literal life savings in a mentor to oh, teach wow. me how to, how to make a business out of this, how to make a life out of being on social media and being a nutritionist and wanting to help people become healthy. And if it didn't work, I would have been screwed. When Ooh. I say I invest in my life savings, I'm that's not an exaggeration. I wish that wasn't such a cliche God, because dang. that was my literal reality. Being on the other side of the planet, I had to actually have my dad go down to the bank for me and wire the money from my bank account because it was such it was such a big transaction that I couldn't I couldn't just call up and do it. That was how intense Dang. this was. I was going all in. And the reason why was because you know I was I'm so passionate about this. I'm so passionate about helping people become healthy and in living this lifestyle for myself and I knew that I was not born to be an average person. Come I was like now. I don't care because what I have to lose is is financial. And I I want to be able to look back on my life and say I gave it a thousand percent and maybe it didn't work, but I can't say that I didn't try. And the worst case scenario, the worst case scenario is that I go back to a bank account with zero dollars in it. When I was 16 years old, I had a bank account with zero dollars in it and I'm doing fine at 20. I didn't have a bank account at 16. <laughs> I didn't even have a bank account. But the fact that she invested her life savings is insane, man. Like that is going all in. She really went for it, and uh, she hasn't talked about why she left Australia yet, but uh, I love the fact that she went there, moved across the, the world, and was just like, I'm going to chase what I love. Like, I'm, I'm going all in, and she did. 24, so that's the worst thing that could have happened, and that was something that I was okay with because my passion outweighed my fear, and so I just went for it. So I went all in and I was working full time as a teacher, going to school every single day in Australia, teaching the kiddos. Hi guys, I miss you all so much. Um, and I was also building a business on the side. So I had one-on-one -on -one clients at the end of 2018. And then in January of 2019, I launched my first program. And then I launched another one in March. And it was my obsession. My clients were all I thought about. I was teaching and I was standing in front of a classroom of students and in my mind all I could think about was my clients because they <laughs> were my world and it lit me up. Doing check-ins with them, it just brought me so much immense joy. And I was listening to a podcast and it said, make a list of the things that bring you energy and the things that take energy from you. Mm -hmm. And when I thought about what brought me energy, I thought about my clients and, and my program and doing this and making content for my program and how I just, I feel I feel high as a kite after I do that stuff because it's, it, it revs it. me up and it fills my bucket and I feel so, so passionate and so fulfilled doing it. And I was like, if this is what brings me so much joy and energy and happiness, why am I not spending every waking moment of my life doing it? Come so on, my original Amy. plan was to stay in Australia until June and, and teach there. Um, and I decided in March after hearing that podcast and just being so wrapped up inside of, of the program and my clients that that couldn't be the case. Um, because it was an injustice to my clients to my students and to myself to be splitting energy um, because my clients deserved every ounce of my energy. It was unfair to my students that I was standing in front of them and all I could think about was my clients. Yeah. And then finally, it was unfair to myself because I wasn't doing what made me happy 24 seven. I was doing something that I felt was a bit obligatory because I had a degree in education and I almost couldn't believe that it could be this good that I could live a life actually doing what I love. So in terms of what I wanted to do, I knew that I had to go just all in on, on this and my program and my clients. Um, and then just logistically, I loved, loved Australia. But I was getting up at five o'clock in the morning to take calls. I was staying up late to take calls because of the time differences between the United States and Australia. 
Um, I was driving to the Apple store multiple times a week to use their Wi-Fi. Things were extremely unsustainable. Not to yeah. mention it was me, myself, alone in my apartment running this entire thing. Yeah. And I didn't have the support of my, the emotional support of my family or my close, close, close group of friends that I've been friends with since the age of five. I've been friends with them for 20 years. Um, and they were on the other side of the planet. and. I would wake up to messages from them and they would be asleep while I was awake all day and it was a lot. It was a lot being 23, being 24, building a business and doing it on my own and not having- Yeah, I feel that. I feel where she's coming from. She's moved, packed up, moved to the other side of the world where she didn't know anybody. She left her family, you left your friends. Uh, and now, like your passion, you went over there to teach, but your your passion is not really teaching. Your passion is is helping people through by being a nutritionist and also creating content and helping people, and that's one hundred percent your passion. But it seems like most of her clients were in the United States, and so it just it didn't make sense where she was at. You uh, know what I'm saying? Where she in Australia it didn't align with her passions. Her passion, you know what I'm saying? In America, everything will seems like lined up better. Now I'm here. Now I'm still doing, I get to do what I love every waking moment, but now I have the emotional support of my family. Now I have the support of my friends. Now, you know what I'm saying? And so, uh, while she, like she said, she probably loved Australia, had an amazing time there. Uh, with what she was doing, it just made more sense for her to come back to Boston. Having anybody around me to support me. <laughs> And I wanted to, sh to share this with, with my friends and my family as well. And it just, it got a little lonely, um, to be quite frank and honest. And I had friends in Australia, but there's something about the people that you've known and that, and that yeah. you've grown up with forever. It's just, it's a different, it's, it's different and it I can't be right. replaced. And this was such a transition. This is, this is such a transitional <laughs> period of my life. Um, I felt as though I needed I needed that home base, I needed that support. So I am back in Boston and this is my life now. I'm doing my program and I'm doing YouTube and as for teaching, I am still teaching just in a different way. I'm not in the classroom teaching math. I'm teaching people how to be healthy and how to lose weight and my program is run through the platform called Teachable. I'm still a teacher, I'm just doing it differently and I'm still going to hold on to classroom teaching. I still, I have my license, I'm a certified teacher. Um, perhaps I'll do a little bit of subbing in the coming year, I just, I don't know. And as Ron Swanson said in Parks and Rec, blueprints for the future are a fool's errand. I come need on. not know what's going to come in the next few months, but I come know on. that I'm doing something that I always dreamed of doing and it's just, I think that we're conditioned to believe that we have to do something that we don't want to do and that we Talk. have to have jobs that are miserable and that's not Talk, the case. If Amy. you're watching this video, you can Preach, Emmy. Preach, you sure, along with being a nutritionist, you don't need to become a life coach, Emmy? Because you are preaching right now. Do whatever it is that you want to do. And it might be scary and terrifying. And you know, I don't have a sense of security that I had with teaching where I had my job to go to every day. But the most successful people in the world with the most fulfilling lives don't settle for safety and they don't settle for comfortable. And that's something that I have to remind myself of every single day. So to each and every one of you watching this video, you have changed my life and you've, you've built a family that I, I never imagined could be possible. So I love you, you watching this video. Thank you for changing my life and thank you for being a part of this journey with me. And I can't wait to continue this journey and keep you guys in the loop. Um, I'm thinking about sharing a little bit more of my personal life on my Instagram. It's usually very health based, but I'm thinking about, I don't know, just showing you the people in my life who want to be on camera um, and just opening you up a little bit to that. So just a little side note there. So if you want a life update about what's going to happen moving forward, let me know. Otherwise, I will see you honeys in my next video. I love and adore you. And if you're still watching, you're a rock star. Let me know. Send me a DM and say I made it to the end of that video and I will send you a million kisses. <laughs>
Nah, I, man, I rocked with her. Oh, I let her. I love you guys so much, and I'll see you in my next video. Woo! I love that so much. Uh, shout out her. I don't know. It just it makes me smile. It makes me happy. Uh, just to know that, know what I'm saying? She decided to just chase after what makes her happy, chase after what she's obsessed with, chase after her dreams. And I feel like everybody should do that uh, because you only get one life. And at the end of the, at the end of your life, you wanna you wanna not have any regrets. You wanna go to your grave knowing right that I did everything that I wanted to in life, uh, or at least I strived to do everything that I wanted to in life. And you don't wanna and you wanna know that you didn't settle for a life that didn't make you happy. That's all we got. You guys got a favorite video suggestion? You can subscribe to Patreon or drop it in the comment section. She would in here out.